um, hi everyone this is smruti welcome to qa automation classes so we are continuing with our unix session so for today i am planning to complete uh, the files and directories and uh, mostly we will be looking into the ls command and what are the different options are available to the ls command okay and then we will see what is the linux file system architecture so let's start guys so first coming to the directory what is a directory so directory is a folder where the files and sub directories are stored okay so on windows we say folder but in the linux we say directory okay so the directory can contain different files as well as the different sub directories okay so file the content of the directory is called as the file okay so let's come to the ls command okay so the ls command it is used to see the list of the directories and files used okay use the command ls okay so ls can list out the normal files and the directories and the information like the type of the file the size of the file modified date and time permission and links are not listed with the ls command so we have the different options available to the ls command by help of them we can get these details okay and also it doesn't show the hidden files and the directories so let me quickly go to the cgen console okay so let's first identify what is the current directory now pwd right yesterday we have seen this command pwd stands for the print working directory that means the current directory on which you are present it will show so now it says home slash phoenix so i can quickly show you the home directory c drive the join home phoenix so currently i am here this is my directory okay so now uh, okay so uh, if you see here there are few files are here and there is a another directory called test okay so let's go into the test directory how to switch to the sub directory you say cd and here i can type d e and use tab it is work it works as a auto completion so see the test came right so click and uh, hit enter so now if you see here you can see right the tilde symbol and slash test so if i try pwd and hit enter now it will show me i am inside home inside phoenix inside the test so this is how you navigate to the different sub directories from the parent directories right cd and then the name of the sub directory so now let's see so what are the content available to this directory test so i can say as we know the uh, command is ls right here right so let's try the ls command ls enter okay so if you see the ls command listed out few output right so there is new folder okay there is setup x86 underscore 64.exe test2.txt test text.txt test zip.zip okay so now i'll go to this directory and show you the content of that directory and go inside the test directory now you can see there is a new folder okay this is a sub directory for the test directory because this is present in the test directory right this is the parent directory this is the child directory so this new folder is called as the sub directory for this parent directory test and here i have few files if you see the console has given me the output listing out all this information 1 2 3 4 5 6 six things are there so here if you see 1 2 3 4 5 okay one uh, file didn't come here right why it didn't come so um in linux linux okay so anything starts with the dot 
okay it's considered as a hidden item so now if you see that is one file with which started with the dot right dot hidden file okay so this is a hidden file this is a text file i have given the name as a hidden file and it starts with the dot so the ls command doesn't have the ability to show the hidden files so here if you see that hidden file is missing here right and as we have already discussed the ls command it doesn't give the information like file type if it is a file or a directory the uh, and different other types of the files are there which will be seeing in the upcoming sessions and then the size what is the size and modified data and type permission and links okay there is soft link and hard link that also we are going to cover in the next session okay or maybe somewhere in the upcoming session so and it doesn't show the hidden files and directories okay so but there there are the few options are applicable to this ls command okay so how to identify what are the options applicable for this ls command so yesterday we have discussed right so we can type ls hyphen hyphen help so hit enter so these are the list of the options available okay so along with the ls we can use one or more than one options okay and the output will be as per the options you have provided so here if you see there is an option called as hyphen a do not ignore entry starting with dot means the a so you know the entries which starts with the dot are the hidden files right so now there can be a question to list out all the files and folder inside a particular folder so how to do that so for that what you will write ls hyphen a now hit enter now you can see the hidden file should also be coming here see you can see here dot hidden file dot txt new folder setup this one test two dot txt test text dot txt test chip dot zip okay so all the six files are present here are the six things like uh, five files and one sub directory right one two three four five five files and one sub directory so what about this dot and double dot we have not created anything like this right and if we go to the uh, for that sub directory also we don't see anything with the single dot and double dot right so what are those these two are nothing but the system related directories which is automatically getting created this is a unique system by default it creates two uh, directories dot and double dot okay and these are the things whatever we have already created inside that directory hope everyone is clear right if you have any questions just put them in the comment section okay thank you so let's go forward okay so here uh, ls hyphen a any directory or file that starts with dot or double dot is known as the hidden directory or files okay in order to view the hidden content use ls hyphen a dot and double dot are the two system directories and were created automatically okay this is what the linux by default creates these two directories these are the system directories right the user doesn't create them okay so now let's see the next option ls hyphen l okay so what does it do uh, what it does actually uh, it's the long listing of the files okay it shows if it is directory or file size or modified date and timestamp name owner details and the permissions okay so let's see ls hyphen l then only we'll understand ls hyphen l okay hit enter so now yes what we are seeing here so total something this is the total size and then if you see here if you want to understand l right what it says use a long listing format right okay so the details i'll explain so they have not given lot many uh, information here so let's see i can explain so here if you see uh, it, it has listed out all the folders and the files right so now if you see the new folder this is a folder or the subdirectory right 
inside the test directory so for this one you can see uh, it starts with the d right if you see the highlighted portion right here you see d right the first output is d d is nothing but the directory if this is a directory then it will start with d if it is not a directory if it is a file then it is going to start with a hyphen you can see all others are starting with the hyphen right hyphen means these are normal files right setup x86 64 it is a file test.txt is a file test text.txt this is also a file test zip zip is also a file so that's why the directories will always start with the d and the files will always start with the what hyphen right so let me copy the entire thing from here and put it in a notepad so that we can discuss more about them okay. copy let me okay so okay so let's see let's see what are these things okay so first is like uh, d r w x r hyphen x r hyphen x right so let's decode this part okay. so what is this so the you can th these are nothing but the uh, read write and execute permission okay and in unix system we have uh, three things okay one is the user or the owner right owner is nothing but the the owner of the file or the directory okay and then comes the groups okay so the group is nothing but uh, the group to which the owner as well as the few other people belongs or few other users belong that is the group and then comes the others right the others are nothing but who are not the user right who is not the owner as well as they don't belongs to that user group also so if you see so i can say so there is o g o or i can better say u so this is what it happens right so first one is u u is nothing but the user or owner and then group and then the other okay so now if you see the three after d take the three places okay so r w x so r stands for the read operation w stands for the write operation and x stands for the execute operation okay so for the user so initially what we are going to do first we are going to see for the user okay so for the user this r w x is applicable right what is this rwx so read write and execute so the user can read okay for this directory user can do the read operation user can do the write operation user can do the execute operation okay and then the next three line right r dash x right x3 line r dash x what does it say this is these are the options available to the group okay so for the group the user who belongs to that group they can do read they don't have the right permission but they can execute so they have the read and execute operation similarly for the others we have r hyphen x that means the author can do the read operation as well as execute operation they also don't have the access to the write operation okay and this is this one is nothing but the link right so i'll uh, discuss about it in detail when i cover the soft link and hard link okay so and this is nothing but the owner right so who's the owner of the this uh, uh this folder right so the phoenix right so this is my username i'm the owner and the group the group we don't have any group we have not had created any group if there is any group uh, 
which has the phoenix user and few other user right so then that group will be listed here okay so those things are not present and uh, groups are, i have not yet created in my system so because of that it is not coming and zero is nothing but here is the size of the file the new folder if you see where is the new folder this is the empty folder right so empty folder is having the zero bytes right so this was the zero and this is the date and time when it was last modified so october 13th 440 at this time i have created this directory okay what is the name of my sub my directory it is new folder okay hope everyone is clear we we saw each and every bit or each and every field whatever is applicable here right whatever is displayed here for this new folder right so hope everyone is clear right this is most important part guys if you are still having any doubt just put them in the comments okay i'll definitely get back to you so now it is uh, okay for everyone right so let's go ahead okay so now similarly for a file if, suppose this is a file right so for this file let's see what are the permissions so it starts with the hyphen that means it's a file it's not a directory so then we have take the first three phrases okay so rwx so the user or the owner have the read write and execute access and then group okay the group to which the owner belongs the other members of that group can read they don't have the right operation they can only execute okay and similarly the others right so they can only read and execute no right permission similarly the link and this is the link this is the similarly the use owner and then the user okay uh, owner and then the user group and then this is the size of the file right so this is in some uh, mb right this is the file size and this is the date okay date and time when it was last modified and then the name of the file okay so this is how you are going to see the output when you use ls hyphen l okay this is the long listing format right yeah. okay let's move forward so next command is ls hyphen lh okay so we saw ls hyphen l so let's see ls hyphen lh it stands for the in human readable format it will show me so if you see yeah, if you see these two output okay so what is what is different in both of the cases the only difference is here you are, you are seeing here right so it was showing some numbers okay so but here if you see it will show zero bytes zero 1.3 m so this is megabyte some mb right so this is 1.3 mb so if that is converted into bytes this is the equivalent byte so here in human readable format they are telling so this is 1.3 mb okay so similarly this one test 2.txt 10195 bytes so it comes around the 10k 10 kilobytes similarly this is 8 bytes and this is 130 bytes so bytes they don't give any abbreviation but if, if it goes to the kilobyte and megabyte they used to give the uh, they used to show like 1.3 m and 10k right megabytes and kilobytes okay hope you guys are enjoying the classes and you guys are able to understand everything right okay so let's see the next option so ls hyphen caps right okay so what does it does ls hyphen caps right now see so what it does actually so for the folder right so if there is a folder or the directory so for that directory it gives a slash symbol at the end of the directory so that you can understand right so what is it there is a slash at the end that means it is a directory okay and let's see what it tells about the cap F. classify okay so here if you see append indicator size format horizontal okay not clear okay fine 
so if you see on the directory you can see a slash symbol here which says like uh, this is a directory and other server files so now coming to the next command uh, ls hyphen r okay it displays the files and directories in the reverse order let's see ls hyphen r so now if you see see how is the output normal output okay it starts with the folder and then the different direct uh, different file sources right if you type ls hyphen r what it is going to do it is going to print the output in the reverse order so first is the last one becomes the first one right and then test text dot txt can then test to the txt then set up file and then a folder okay so if anyone asks like uh, i have like five different files or the few different directories inside inside the directory and you want to list out all the uh, elements in the form of the reverse order in the reverse order for that you can use ls hyphen r okay the next command is ls hyphen ltr okay so it shows the latest modification file or directory date as last okay so let's try this ls hyphen ltr hit enter let's see so <coughs> here you can see right what is the latest modification date right what does it say choose the latest modification file or directory date as last okay so <clears throat> if you see what is the time when these things got updated right so this one is 10 38 it was updated on october 17th so that is um, that is shown in the first and then 8 october uh, sorry october 13th uh, 440 october 13 440 then 441 then 542 this is the file which is recently updated so that is coming in the last in the output okay clear guys ls hyphen ltr right so if you want to sort right there might be a question okay so show me the file which was uh, recently sorted so how will you find that so when you use the uh, hyphen ltr command you can see the last option will always be the the file which was last modified okay then coming to the next command ls hyphen ls okay orders and displays the files as per the size largest file first okay let's see ls hyphen ls so what it is gonna show it is gonna show the largest file okay largest file first it's going to order and then display the files as per the size largest file first so if you see the uh, forget about the folder as of now so now the we are going to see about the uh, files okay so if you see this file right this is in some mb 1.3 mb but all other files are in the kb some are in kb and some are in the bytes okay so obviously this file takes the larger size right so this is listed first among all the files this is listed first okay so that is the job of ls hyphen ls so ls hyphen i so so i node number okay so let's see ls hyphen So when you say ls hyphen i so it is going to show the inode number of each of the whole directory or each of the files so if you see here this is the file this is the respective corresponding inode number for this file this is corresponding inode number so i'll discuss a little bit into that inode what is inode right different types of the blocks are available in the linux operating system okay so this is like we still have so many other options applicable if you guys want you can go through the help and you can explore them okay but just remember this is the most important command okay because this is what we are going to use most of the time okay so practice it and if you have any questions just let me know okay now let's come to the linux file system architecture okay so 
what are the different uh, blocks are present in the linux uh, linux uh, right so <clears throat> the secondary memory right the hard disk right the secondary memory is nothing but the hard disk okay that is partitioned into an array of the logical blocks okay so internally the secondary memory is partitioned into an array of the logical blocks and each logical block has four areas okay for each and every logical block there are four areas so one is the boot block then super block inode block and data block okay so what is a boot block so the boot block contains the bootstrap programs which is used to load the operating system okay that is uh, that's what the boot block contains all the bootable programs which are required to load the operating system are present in the boot block then super block it contains the details about the file system like size of the file system and logical block last update date and timestamp and number of the blocks allocated or unallocated okay this is what the super block contains now comes the inode block okay so in inode the i stands for the index so it is also known as the index node okay so this inode block is a data structure in a linux style file system that describes a file system object such as file or directory so it is more of like uh, like uh, it describes a file system object like a file like uh, or directory okay when we create a file or directory then a unique inode number is assigned to them so whenever you are creating any directory or any file a particular unique inode number will be assigned to them if you have seen here right this is a directory right for that directory also we have inode number these are the files for each of the individual file we have the respective or the corresponding inode numbers right that's what it says here right whenever we create a file or directory then a unique inode number is assigned to them and it stores the information like type of the file number of the links and owner of the file so this inode block right it stores this information what is the type of the file uh, what are the number of the links available and who's the owner of the file okay so the type of the file as i have already told you we'll discuss it uh, in the great length in the upcoming sessions okay so next comes the data block so it stores the files data okay so name only specifies it's a data block so it's going to store the data so if a data block is not allocated to a file then it is considered as free and can be utilized by the system to allocate as and when required okay so this is mostly used for the storing the data okay so hope uh, you guys enjoyed this session okay please do subscribe to my channel okay and if you guys have any questions just put them in the comment section and yeah thank you everyone bye